Today, as we pray, we're going to go ahead and thank God. This is the last Sunday of the month of August. You are alive, you are safe. God has kept your family, kept your children, and you're going in and coming out. Death has not come to your home. Many have passed on, but God has kept you. Anywhere you are, lift up your hands. Let's go ahead and thank Him. He's a great God, He's a wonderful God. Oh, Karaba Shakaraba Surama Takalaba. If you can find a place where you are to kneel, go ahead and kneel and just go ahead and thank God. If it's okay to kneel where you are, if it's not okay, just on your seat, standing, anywhere you are, just go ahead and worship the Lord. Father, we worship you today. Father, we bless your name today. Jine Kurante Karatioso Katalimaza. What is like unto our God? If not for your message, we will have been consumed. Our faithful God, our kind God. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for joy. Thank you for all the way from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August us here. Many people have passed on. You've kept and preserved us. You're blessed and provided for us. Father, we give you praise today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And Father, we refuse to be ungrateful. We choose to be grateful. Thank you for blessings we can name, for the ones we can name, for life, for health, for joy and peace. We are grateful. Speak to us, we ask you today through your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God. This month we've been talking about finances and one of the things we're really sharing about finances is that how it's God's will for us to do well financially. And, and, and let me say something quickly here. One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people are looking for opportunities because everybody understands that opportunities are factors that will give you an advantage in life. Everybody understands that. So people are looking for opportunities. So you will hear people say that, you know, um, why, why is your life like this? And there's a sense of helplessness that they have. There's a sense of being stuck that they have. And what they feel that, they, they feel as if my life is this way because there's nobody to help me. I, I have no opportunities. Someone said, if I had an opportunity to go to school, my life would not be this way. If I just knew somebody else, my life would not be this way. So everyone keeps talking about opportunity because people know that opportunity grants you a factors that grant you an advantage and gives you the edge over other people. So if you're sitting there right now and you feel as if I have no opportunity, I understand you. But that's why this message is for you. Because after this message, you will see how you can walk by the Spirit into opportunities. Hallelujah. How you can walk into opportunity. And there are people that feel as if I have opportunity. I've seen an opportunity in oil and gas. I've seen an opportunity in finance. I've seen one in some sector. But the challenge is this. I don't have what it takes to be able to step into the opportunity. The truth is that why I understand the frustration because it can be very frustrating knowing what you can do, knowing what you can become because of that opportunity that the fact that you don't have it, it's very demoralizing. But thank God because in the place of our shortfall, the Spirit of God can make a way. You know, the Bible says something because Psalm chapter 20, 23. It says, verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Next verse, He makes me lie down in green pasture. What does that mean? Green pasture means opportunity. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you are born for opportunities. He says, God makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. God makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. Anywhere you are is green pasture. Why? I'm a child of God. Anywhere I am is green pasture. I'm in, I'm in banking. I'm in banking greens pasture. I'm in oil and gas. It's green pasture for me. Green pasture for me means a place, a zone that is full of opportunity. This is why you can trust God for opportunities. So I says, why are you talking like that? Don't you know how my life is? I'm a child of God, but I have nothing to show for it. I've worked here for 14 years and there's no opportunity I've seen. If I have opportunity, will my life be like this? My children are, you know, can't move forward. This cannot make progress just because I have no opportunity. That's why I'm teaching today how to step into spirit-inspired opportunity. I know what it feels like to be stuck. Look at, look, 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 look at the, the man. Look at the man at the pool of Bethesda. He knew if he stepped into the river, he would be healed. The river was his opportunity for healing. But what it took to get to the river, he didn't have it. 
Many of you know what it, many of you know what the opportunity is. You've seen something. You've seen a gap. You've seen a need. You've seen a need you can provide value, but you don't have what it takes to step into it. So you actually feel like you are handicapped. That's how you feel. The brothers of David, Eliab, and his other brothers, they saw Goliath. They knew whoever killed Goliath will become the king's son-in-law. But they couldn't because they felt trapped. Have you ever gone through life before and you know what to do but you don't have the capital for it? Have you ever gone through life before and you know you need to, you, this can be achieved but there's nobody you know that can make that happen? Have you ever gone through life before and you know that I can do this but there's no platform? I think about musicians that can really sing and blow out the roof but nobody knows their voice because there's no platform. I think of business people that can really expand their business but there's no finances and they're struggling with the small that they have I see people that work in corporations and they can see how to get things better but there's no part in which that voice can be expressed and one of the most frustrating things in life is to have opportunities and not be able to take advantage of it the man at the bull of Bethesda was so discouraged Jesus Christ says do you want to step into the water he said I have no man he has stayed for such a long time. And I know what it means. Because many of you watching right now are really intelligent people. You're smart people. You have dreams. You, you're hardworking. It's not as though you're not hardworking. You're really hardworking. But the truth is that you just need someone to pull you up. You just need someone to, to, to lend you a hand. You just need someone to recommend your product. Someone to mention your name. And you've been trying that for two years. Some of you three years. Some of you four years. But nobody has been able to provide you the platform, that opportunity to see your dreams come true. Why does not have opportunities struggling? There are people that don't even have any opportunity at all. They look at themselves and say, oh, you are lucky that you even have opportunity. I don't have any opportunity. And that reminds me of the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus Christ will go to the house of, you know, several people. Go to the house of Mary, Martha, Lazarus. But for this woman, she didn't have the opportunity for Jesus to come to her house. And that's like, like some of us here. You look around you, you didn't have a great education. You look around you, you didn't step out to know great people. It's as if you know nobody. There's nobody that can really help. I say, I, I have no opportunity. People are really smart, but I'm not that kind of person. But this woman had nothing. She, she, was, she was dripping blood. The Bible says she had an issue of blood. If she sat on a chair, blood would come. And because of that, she couldn't step into the community because anywhere she sat on was unclean and they had to stone her to death. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like that person that the whole world seems to be going? People seem to know what to do and how to do it. And they have no opportunities. But everybody seems to have, but not me. That's how the woman felt. Everybody could call Jesus and invite him to their house. Everybody could attend a meeting where just guys heal the sick. But she couldn't go because she had to hide. Because if she was found in public, she will be killed. Have you felt that the reason why you're not married is because there are certain marital opportunities that you lost? Because one of the most painful things in life is lost opportunity. This woman did something significant. And this I want to think today. Everyone that's watching, listening to this, and you feel as if I don't have enough opportunity to become all I want to be. Remember, sometimes you don't wait for opportunity. Sometimes you seize opportunity. This woman did not just sit down and wish that if Jesus could come to my house, if I can get him to lay hands on me. He said, if Jesus, my opportunity will not touch me, I will touch him. Oh, glory to God. He said, if my opportunity will not touch me. And the Bible says, it went, she went behind the crowd and touched just a helm of his garment. Sometimes people that think there is no opportunity the reason why you think there's no opportunity is this because the opportunity around you is going to require you to stretch it's going to require you to take some action that will seem as if you're going to die but listen to me people sometimes the best way to grow is to step out of your comfort zone and do what you have never done before and achieve what you have never achieved before and ask what you have never asked before because that is the way you are going to see opportunity opportunity are God's channels for increasing us I'm telling you because 
So that's why you're saying this, because sometimes when you're praying for a miracle, especially for your business or career or finances, one of the ways that God deals with you, he opens an opportunity for you. How do I know that? When it was time for God to bless Joseph, the king had to have a dream that only Joseph could interpret opportunity. When it, was time to, when it was time to bless Isaac, there was a famine in the land. And guess what? While everybody was broke, Isaac had this unusual insight that was able to help him you plant seeds and reap crops through some, some wisdom, irrigation, and prosper. That's opportunity. Glory to God. Those were opportunity people. God gave them opportunities. One of the ways that God is going to bless you is this, by giving you opportunity. And I'm saying so today. And you know I'm saying so? Because a wise man will make more opportunity than what he finds. Because many of you are waiting for opportunities. I'm saying maybe it's time you start making opportunities. Look at the story in Luke chapter 5. Verse 1, stepping into spirit-led opportunities. And it came to pass, as the people pressed on him, Jesus, to hear the word. He stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. The Bible says, and he entered into one of the ship, which was Simon's, and prayed it would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Jesus Christ saw people willing to listen to him. And the first thing he noticed was that someone had a ship he could use. Simon's ship was Jesus' opportunity. You know what I'm saying so to you? Because the biggest mistake people make is this. People do not realize that opportunities are everywhere but people do not realize them because they are dressed in hard work in unnoticeable patterns. Someone comes and sees something and there's no big deal. Another person looks at that thing and is shocked because he can see opportunity. Success is about taking advantage of opportunities. I, you know, I was reading the story of those young, um, those young guys, Softcom. The company is run by people in their early 30s in, Lake, in Lagos, Nigeria, for those of us in Africa. And if you know something about Africa, it seems that people succeed at an older age. That's the, the way the structure is currently, but we're changing it. <laughs> we're oh, sure, but the power of God, we're changing it. Your story is going to be different in the name of Jesus Christ. So the, those guys in their 30s, early 30s, right now they have a company that is doing maybe, um, has about maybe 200 staff, maybe, you know, in, in, in terms of in, um, profit maybe about 20 30 million dollars per, per annum something like that you know which is huge in our part of the world and the amazing thing was that what opportunity they see and i said opportunity comes most of the time as unnoticed patterns they just noticed that a lot of nigerians did not have bank accounts and they said nigerians have phones we have maybe about 30 or 40 million people using the bank in nigeria i'm not sure about the figure but we have about 150 people, million people using the phone. So if there are just about 30 million people using the bank, that means the vast majority of the country is what is unbanked. And they said, why not let's convert their telephone numbers to their bank account? So much so that you can send money over. And that's their story. That's their story right there. And the reason I'm saying so is this. This is the reason I'm saying so. The reason I'm saying so is because just the way opportunities are, you don't notice it. The other day I read, I, I came across a young girl, I think she's, right, she's never been up to 30. And, and ladies, I hope this will inspire you. She's maybe about 27 or 28. And, and this lady, very significant, she's, she's, she's co-partner in Piggy Bank. And Piggy Bank says, people want to save money, but they don't know how to save this small money. And they created the concept and the product, the Piggy Bank. And the last I heard, I think that cost maybe 500 million or something like that. But just because they notice something, I'm saying this to you because these are huge opportunities. So when I say spirit inspired opportunity, I'm saying that sometimes this opportunity is going to come in a way that you will have to discern by the spirit. It will not look like what you're familiar with. It will look very differently. So these are how they come. So I want to say quickly about seven ways I'm going to take some here. We'll continue next week in which you can step into opportunity. 
remember blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, what did he do? Jesus was walking down. He had never seen Jesus before, but he had always heard about Jesus. As soon as he heard, he knew his opportunity was there. He began to shout, Son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody wanted him to be quiet. He refused to be quiet. Let me tell you something. When it comes to seizing opportunity, you might have to be abnormal to seize your opportunity. People that are waiting for opportunity to stay in their lives, it never gets there. You have to seize it. As he was screaming, the Bible says this, the master stopped and called for him. The people that told him shut up are the people that created space for him to walk through. The people that told him keep quiet are the same people that said the master bid you to come. You know what I'm saying? So when you are going for your opportunities, there will be sounds of discouragement. But once you have seen the future, you don't get discouraged. You keep pressing on and pressing on until the opportunity is seized. And as soon as Jesus Christ, he was ministered to and the blind eye opened. So how do I step into opportunity? The first thing is this. You have to be clear and definite in your goals. I just read to you in Luke chapter 5. Jesus wanted to preach the gospel. And that was how he was able to notice Peter's boat as an opportunity to preach the gospel. If Jesus did not have a clear goal in his mind of preaching the gospel, he will not be able to unnest or notice what he could use to preach the gospel. The reason why people do not see opportunities are this. They are not very clear in their mind on what they want to do. The moment you have clarity of thought, directions, and goals, you will be able to notice the opportunities you have not seen around you. That's what will happen. This is why I said it here. Opportunities are everywhere, but clarity of goals will help you identify opportunity. It's difficult to identify opportunity where you don't have goals because opportunity themselves are pathways. It's the goals that defines what they are. As soon as Jesus Christ knew he wanted to preach the gospel, all of a sudden Peter's boat became an opportunity because with Peter's boat it could be at a height higher than them and the waves of the sea behind him can carry his word further to run into the crowds and they can hear him at a very far place. I'm saying so to you today because do you have clear goals? Do you have clear goals? Do you have clear goals? Look, 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 at, what, look, look, look at the story of Esther. Why did Esther was raised by Uncle Mordecai? Why did Mordecai take, make Esther go for the pageant and become a queen? Mordecai was a future Lisa. Mordecai was going to the future. He said, it is good if we can have a Jew in the, in, the, in, in, in the palace. Because if something happens in the future, we will have someone that can what represent our interests. So he carefully considered the identity of Mordecai as a Jew. Mordecai became a queen. The reason why Mordecai and Esther saw that as an opportunity was because they had clear goals. Their clear goals was this. We will not be suppressed. We will have a voice on the table that matters. I'm saying so because the people that really take advantage of opportunities, what happens is this. The first thing, their spiritual eyes have been opened to see the future. And as they see the future, they begin to take decisions today that will create the vision that they desire. So much so that the future does not happen to them they are the one that create the future desire what happens eventually as a need came and they came under attack Mordecai sent what to Esther he said who knows if thou have come for a time like this because Mordecai had understood by prophetic insight that a time will come that we will need help from the palace and you are now positioned for it the reason why Mordecai could take that decision was because he had a clear goal in his mind the future was definite and clear he understood that as the Jews grow stronger there will be opposition there will be suppression and he understood that there will be people that must stand in the places for them to have their voices heard. I'm saying to you today that if you are going to step into opportunities, you are going to have clarity of visions and goals. Isaiah chapter 42, Isaiah chapter 42 verse 19. See what the Bible says. And when people say, I don't have opportunities, I don't set opportunities, and you feel as if, you know, you know, this is so unfair, life is unfair to me, I don't know what to do, I need some help, nobody is willing to help me. What you need to understand is this, opportunity is everywhere, but eyes that see opportunity 
it out. Right. This is what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 19. He said, Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind that he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? How is he blind? The Bible says, See many things but observeth not. He said, Opening the ears but he hears not. So this person, there are actually things that he's seeing. But because there's no clarity in his eyes and his eyes have been blind, he cannot see what he should do. There are several things he's hearing, but because the ears are deaf, he cannot hear. One of the things you have to do for yourself is that to break forth from everything that's clothed in your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears. You know why? Just like in a place, you will see some people come to a place and see opportunity there. And people have lived in that place for thousands and hundreds of years and tens of years and never see the opportunity. The reason why is that there is a way that they look that cannot see again. And that's why the first thing you have to do to see opportunity is this. You must declare in your goals. How do you become clear with your goals? The way we receive clarity is in the place of prayer. One of the powerful things that prayer does is this. In the place of prayer, we can, we can be able to gain access into the plan and the wisdom of God for our life. So this is what you do if you want to be clear about the future. This is what you do. You go to God in prayer and it's not by saying the things you want to do. God already has a plan for you. The Bible says the plans I have towards you are the plans of peace, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. And you go to God in prayer with deep submission and say, Father, this is me. I submit myself to you. And you begin to say, Lord, I'm here to be able to incubate your plan for my life as you stay in the place of prayer this is how your answer will come God will begin to drop thoughts into your spirit God will begin to drop ideas into your spirit sometimes you leave the place of prayer you pick up a book it can be a book you've read before or a book you've read before as you read through it it will just seem as if the word in the book are jumping out what has happened is that there is a breath upon that thought that is resonating to your request in prayer sometimes it will be the fact that you are talking to a friend and as he begins to speak to you there will just be an impression he will not even know what is happening but an impression because what will happen is that God will begin to use all possible channels in response to your prayer not just your desire God will use all possible channels in response to your prayer to provide you direction to provide you goals and clarity and as you do that but the first step is this is to go to God in the place of submission the reason why most of us don't have clarity from God is this we go to God with an agenda we go to God with an assignment and you say God bless this and God say uh uh listen to me and let me say this is why it is to go to God just with pureness and submission we are saying to God Lord I'm not as wise as you are I complain as I am and I submit to your eternal plan show me what your plan is for your, my life you say your thoughts are higher I accept and believe it and as you begin to do that what will happen at the thought of God will begin to drop in your spirit and as the thought of God drops in your spirit the second thing you have to write there's something about writing writing makes you use all of your senses both your eyes you know both your eyes your mouth everything because it's involved in writing as you begin to write you know writing is so powerful that in the bible when people have some natural vision the angel will tap them and say hey oh boy calm down take the pen and begin to write I'm telling you, because that will show you how powerful writing is. As you begin to write, what will happen is this. In the place of writing, you will have a lot of clarity and definitions on what you have to do. The second thing you have to do is this, to step into opportunities. The first thing is this, what do you do? You become clear and definite in your goals. So there are people, and let me say this quickly. Some people say, well, I've been praying to know the will of God for the past five years. Let me say something to you. If I've been praying to know the will of God for the past five years, you are praying the wrong prayer. Our God is not that difficult. There's nothing you can ask God for. That, can, <laughs> In fact, let me just give it to you. The way spiritual guidance works is this. There's nothing you are asking God for that God is answering you back. Guidance is in your spirits. When you say you are asking God, what you're really doing is this. You are looking into your spirit to find out what God has said. It's like going on internet, Google, and you Google, what is Amazon? 
the answer that comes up did not come up because you asked. The answer was inside that system already. But by the time you ask, that question begins to find that answer. So when you hear people say that you want to ask that a lady, you say, that, hey, sister, how far would they, I, I want to marry? You say, well, I've been praying for six months, God has not answered me. Just know she doesn't like you. That's it. That's they say, it's a spiritual way of saying that she doesn't want to marry you. Just move on and move to another person. That's the truth. This one, you're praying and praying and praying. Sometimes, People hide behind finding the will of God. They hide their fear there. They know what to do, but they're afraid to do it. So they will say, we are praying and praying and praying. My brother, don't let prayer become an excuse for your failure. You have to step out and act in faith. The Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The second thing you have to do for opportunity is this. The Bible says this, and, and verse in Luke chapter 5, back to Luke chapter 5. The Bible says this, and he sat down, um, so let me just move, move forward a little. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him and said, he would trust out a little from the land. He sat down and thought the people out of the ship. I want to notice something. In this situation, Jesus needed a boat to preach the gospel. Did you notice Jesus did not pray for a boat? He went to meet Peter and said, can I use your boat? There are things that you praying for does not subsidize hard work. None of us is, as, is more anointed than Jesus Christ. If Jesus can make a step towards his goal by going to ask Peter, you should get up right now and go and ask somebody for something. You should get up right now and do something about your goal. Many of you have laid hands on your goal for such a long time. You have commanded your business to grow for such a long time. In fact, you have even commanded the girl to come and toast you for so long time. All that will not work. What will work is that, my brother, get your butt up and get going. You have to do something. Imagine Jesus. He wanted to use a boat. He didn't command the angel to Peter to come. He went to Peter and began to talk. The reason I'm saying so is that there is this religiosity that says once we are prayed, we just fold our hand and hide behind our prayer. No, sir. Once you are prayed, the next thing is action. You have been praying for opportunities. Opportunities don't come. You have to seize opportunity. You go to where it is. So the second principle of seven opportunities is you don't wait for opportunity. You seize opportunity. The moment you are intentional, about your goals and your growth, you will begin to attract opportunities and seize opportunity. Let me tell you what the Bible says here. In the book of Matthew chapter, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4, what does it say? He says, he that observeth the wind will not sow. NLT says, the farmer that wait for perfect weather will never plant. What does that mean? The reason why you are waiting for opportunity is just one thing, fear. You are saying that because one, it's a fear of stretching. It's a fear of failure. It's a fear of inadequacy. Some of you will say, I'm planning, I'm planning, I'm planning. Listen to me. There are some people that plan and use their plan as a fear. How can you be planning to start on for five years? How can you be planning to talk to someone to help you for two years? Listen to me. You have to get up today. You have to get up today. You, after this message, you pick up the phone by the Spirit and say, in the name of that, and make a call. Tomorrow morning, you walk into that place and say, I've come for negotiation. It says, he that looks at the wind will not sow. If you are waiting for perfect condition, and let me say something to you control your emotion I'm telling the truth because sometimes your emotion takes over you and makes you feel as if something nothing has changed just your emotion you contain your emotion the way you control your emotion is that you control your thought once you can control your thought how do you control your thought you control your thought by controlling your mouth your thought listens to your mouth by speaking new words into your mind your emotion will change if your emotion makes you feel like you can't do it you can't do it you can't do it what do you do go to into a solitary place and begin to tell yourself what you tell yourself why is my emotion saying I can't do it there's a sense of inadequacy you begin to remind yourself that I am the workmanship of Christ Jesus created in perfection what does that mean there's nothing wrong with me at all God cannot make a product that's not good hallelujah how can base make a car that's not perform how can just mess this base make a car cannot perform how can Rolls Royce make a car that stops on the road it's impossible if human beings can make those kind of cars and have those kind of guarantee upon it what about the God of the heavens and earth that looked at you and said you are made in my image I'm a perfect expression of God's goodness I'm a perfect expression 
impression of God's wisdom. So that thing that says in you that you should be afraid or you're incompetent is the fear that has developed within. How do you paralyze it? Fear came because of what you heard. You heard from your parents, you heard from friends, from family. How does faith come? Faith comes because of what you hear. If nobody will speak faith filled words to you, you have your own mouth begin to speak faith filled words. What are faith filled words? Faithful is it has begun the good thing in me will finish it. He that's begun the good thing in me will finish it. Hallelujah. You begin to declare, I'm stable, I'm excellent, I'm full of dignity, I'm full of excellence. I have the spirit of excellence. I'm able to start things and complete them. I declare, I'm full of faith. That's how you begin to become full of faith. So you see people that are waiting for opportunities. People that say, they say well, I'm just waiting to no. We are looking for opportunities. No, 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 no. The woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9 verse 21. What did she say? He says, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. He says, I'm not going to wait for someone. He says, if I may but touch the helms of his garment. This is the way a great man says it. He said, opportunity dances with those on the dancing floor. Huh. It's not those that are looking for it. Opportunity dances with those on the dancing floor. We, and we don't wait for opportunity. What do we do? We prepare by being intentional, building capacity, and giving our best to the current level. And let me say that quickly here. Sometimes, when you are looking for an opportunity, I say, opportunity come in disguise. Sometimes your future opportunity is what you are doing right now. That's the truth. Your future opportunity is in what you are doing right now. How do I mean? Right now, there's something you are doing. If you are able to give it a hundred and ten of your attention, it will create a cycle for something else in the future. That's the truth. But most people always look down at what they are doing. I'm telling you, have you not noticed how God is always intentional? Moses was raised in the palace. Why? Because in the future, he will need to go back to that palace. Then he became a shepherd. Because in the future, he will need to nurture and lead God's people. God was very instrumental. Peter was a fisherman. He used to fish and understood the price of fishing. When he met Jesus Christ, he said, I will make you fishers of men. It's very intentional. What happens is that most people despise where they are currently. Meanwhile, sometimes the future opportunities is currently where you are. Sometimes the future opportunity is currently where you are. You create the future by being faithful and being fruitful with your level. And let me say something here quickly. When you are at a current level, there will be experiences that are not pleasant. What do you do? When you go through experience and not place at current level, this is what you do. You will learn how to stay positive because negativity will sabotage the process of productivity. You will learn how to stay positive. Let me give you an example. In Luke chapter 5, did you notice? Huh. Did you notice this? Peter had caught nothing. Peter caught nothing. And when he caught nothing, he was washing his nets. Then a man came and said, can I use your boat? If Peter was fixed, on the pain of his losses, he will have to just guys get out of here. He will have to get out of here. And the reason I'm saying so is that many of you are so fixed on your loss, you cannot see the opportunity in your loss. And sometimes, what God does is that He uses the weakness, the weak moments, to inspire great thoughts in our heart. Peter had gone through loss, caught nothing all night, and he says, Use my boat. That's significant. I know you don't have a job. But are you able to help others look for a job? I know you don't have money, but the little you have, can you give someone to add to their business money? This is what it means to be positive. What happens when people go through tough times, they become extremely negative. And because they become negative, they are not able to res respond to the crisis from a place of opportunity. They respond to crisis from a place of pain. They respond to crisis from a place for pain. Hallelujah. The third one is this. Be resilient and what? And positive. Be resilient and positive. And I've covered some of those things. Some people be like, you know, I've been working that. I have delays. I have setback. And all of those kind of things. See what the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 2. James chapter 1 verse 2. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Why? Knowing this. This is what I was saying earlier on. That the trying of your faith works patience. But let this point. He says, but let patience have a perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. The reason, watch this now. Many people say, I don't know why I'm stuck. Why I'm standing still, I will explain to you. The reason why people are stuck and stand still is sometimes. 
they go through an experience they should come out of. But because when they go through the experience, they are not willing to let patience have a total walk. What should take them, you know, three months, begins to take them three years. Because they are fighting the lessons. They are fighting the lessons. They are fighting the lessons. James says, when you go through a tough time, he says, submit yourself. Let patience have the total walk. Some of you, you have to go to that tough time because God wants to correct something you're talking. You have to go to that tough time because God wants to correct something you're seeing. And as you expose yourself, you have total walk. So the reason why a lot of people are stuck is this. They are going through something, but the lesson that the Spirit of God wants to bring out of it has not been done. So they go through for a long time. So look at Joseph. Joseph was meant to be a man that would keep secrets as the next to the king, but he could not control his talking. So he first went to the pit. He was talking there. He went to Potiphar's house. He was still talking. <laughs> he was still talking. He ended up in prison. By that time, he had learned to keep quiet. What happened? When he learned the lesson, the palace opened. Sometimes you are stuck where you are because there's something you have to imbibe or there's something you have to stop that you are struggling with. And the, 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 the more you can release it, the faster your progress will be. And the last thing is this. So I said in that point, I said be resilient and positive. Failure is always an opportunity to start in a more intelligent way. Why am I saying so to you? There are many of you right now, you've gone through a phase and you failed. Listen to me. The fact that you failed at something doesn't make you a failure. And failure is never final. If you can get up again and start again, you will know something that you've learned something from what you did in the past way. I read something that said, sometimes success is fading, 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 and succeeding. That's what it is sometimes. But most of us take failure so personal, we are not able to run our race. And the last thing I will say is this. This is the last thing I will say to you. Glory to God. This is the last thing I will say to you. So you saw Peter. Peter caught nothing. The same thing with Anna. Anna had gone through a very, very tough patch. Very, very tough patch. When Anna went through that tough patch, you know, because I talk about seizing opportunity. Anna wanted to get pregnant. When they got to the temple, Anna said, Lord, I want to get pregnant. But there's no pregnancy. Let me seize an opportunity. He said, I came in. I saw Eli is old. You need a prophet. Give me. See, he saw the opportunity. God, you need a prophet. I need a baby. Open the womb of God. I will carry your prophet. As I carry your prophet, you have your baby. And once the womb is open, I will have the rest. That's about seizing opportunity. She could have been bitter. She could have been angry. But she chose to be positive. The reason why most of you may be stuck and in pain is this. When you go to the tough times, you don't see the lesson. You allow the pain of the loss of money. You allow the pain of the loss of opportunity. You allow the pain of disappointment to consume you so much. So much so the vital lessons in your pains are not learned. And those are the vital lessons that become essential to your growth. The last thing is this, which is very essential is this. In the process of stepping to opportunity, be merciful and generous. Be merciful and what? Generous. What does the Bible say? He said, Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. He said, Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Did you notice in Luke chapter 5? Jesus Christ came to Peter. He said, Can I have your boat? Peter had caught nothing. You know, listen to me. I can't imagine that I'm traveling on the express, my car breaks down, and a man walks to me and says, My child has not entered the car to play in the car before. Your car is broken down. Can we be playing in your car? I mean, I'll be so angry. But Peter understood the principle that blessed are the mercy for shall of the mercy. If you allow your personal loss to consume you, you will never be able to show mercy to people. Many of you are looking up to God for mercy. But the question is this, the way mercy works is this, blessed are the merciful. As you show mercy, you obtain mercy. That's what it says. It says, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So you will learn. You look for other people that need opportunity, and by yourself, you open the door of opportunity to them. You look for other people that challenge, by yourself, you become an answer to their prayer. As you open up that door to them, maybe it's someone that needs a school fees, maybe it's someone that needs a job, you get interested. Maybe it's a family that needs an accommodation. As you open the door of mercy up to them, Matthew 5 7 says, Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. What happens is this you begin to attract mercy unto yourself also. You begin to attract mercy unto yourself also. And that's why, as we conclude this, you must understand that mercy and generosity are vital. 
Every help of God is channeled through people. Showing mercy to others amplifies your attraction to divine mercy. Every mercy of God is channeled through people. Showing mercy to others amplifies your attraction to divine mercy. The Bible says Abraham showed mercy to angels, not knowingly. He didn't know, just showed mercy to them. And that was a change of destiny. And that goes on and on on and on in the Bible and that goes on and on maybe you are at a point in your life right now things have gone so bad for you look around you no matter how bad things have gone for you there are people around you right now that you can be helped to stand up and forget about yourself for a moment and begin to show mercy begin to sow the seed of mercy as you sow the seed of mercy divine mercy will open up from heaven and invade you a man came to Jesus Christ and he was contemplating to go or not. And guess what the Jews said? The Jews said to Jesus Christ, he said, this man is a good man. He has even built us a synagogue. He went for him. When he was building the synagogue, he didn't think that I would need help from God one day. But when the help came, he remembered what he had done. Listen to me. Some of you are here. The reason why you are being blessed is the mercy of your father and your mother. And you know it. Your father and your mother were so generous and merciful. Now you are blessed as a result of that. What will your own children receive? if you are not merciful so you must remember this a most difficult and trying time the human spirit becomes very fertile to conceive and to conceive so we must be careful what we do let me explain this way have you seen that there are some moments when people bless and curse from the depth of their heart when people are in trying moment the depth of their heart becomes so sensitive if in that moment all you saw is not the thought of suffering the thought of shame you begin to conceive the thought of mercy you will find that in that moment your heart would generate mercy back that's because but what happens is this when people are going to difficult time and their heart becomes tender they conceive selfishness and they produce that kind of pattern if you want to break that pattern you must learn to be Become what merciful you must learn to do two things generosity 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 towards the poor and generosity towards others and generosity towards the things of God Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3 God says clearly there what did he say he said one of the things he would do is simple that is going to actually deliver the generous from trouble Second Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8. He said, God is going to grant grace to the generous. God, but God is going to make all grace abound generous in such a way that he's going to have all at all time. That's what happens in increasing grace. Psalm 1, 1, 2, verse 5. He says that the generous person is going to have good, good things. And that's just because, not because it's easy. Because as you're going through this path, because let me tell you something. When you're going through the most difficult time in your life, the tendency is to be selfish. But if you want to open up spirit-inspired opportunity, even though you are thinking survival and you're thinking of yourself, I want to be selfish. Because I'm like, why should I care? The reason why you should care is this. By stepping out of the way and making way for other people, God will raise up someone to also make a way for you. The way life is is this. There are things you can do for yourself, but there are things you can't do for yourself. There are doors you can open, but there are doors others must open for you. And because others will open it for you, the way you can make sure the, the door is open is this. You open the door for others and the law of seed will work and others will open the door for you also. Most people become selfish, they contract, they become inward focused and that breaks down. So in this you see people that they, cannot, they can help somebody although it's difficult but they refuse to help. Someone is going through a facility issue, you can send a word of encouragement but you restrict that word. Someone looking for a job, it will cost you nothing to submit a CV. You know, you come to church watching online, it will cost you nothing to give an offering, give your titan offering. You say, no, I don't want to give my titan offering. I will hold it back. Just remember, once you lock the door against your neighbor, once you lock the door against some, uh, helping someone, what you have done is this. Your own door is ahead of time. There will be nobody to open it for you. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray and say, Lord, opportunities to identify opportunities. Oh, we are praying for, to step into spirit-inspired opportunities. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And Father, we thank you for your word today. I'm praying that the word of God will find root in the heart of everybody here. But more than that, that everybody will step into divine spirit-inspired opportunities today. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please pay attention to all I've taught today. Please apply them. It will change your life forever. 
in Jesus mighty name at this time we're going to take our titan offering your giving is an opportunity Jesus is asking for your boats right now that's what he's doing maybe you have not tightened in a long time Jesus is asking for your boat what do you do I know that I've caught no fish I know that my finance is tough but because of what I know that blessed are the mercy which shall obtain mercy I will let my boat in and was Jesus uses the boat he looked at Peter and said cast your net for a jot and it was life-changing the same thing today as you give if you want to give your tithe your offerings the details are on the screen we are going to give as we here are giving let's go ahead and pray Heavenly Father we want to thank you for the opportunity to give our titan offerings today when we give you deliver out of some trouble there's increased grace good things happen in Jesus name we give out of love today receive our giving and let the doors of heaven open for everyone today in Jesus mighty name amen Hallelujah. At this time, you can go ahead and make the transfer on the screen. Go ahead and do a transfer. If you give the fiscal offer, go ahead and do that, and we'll receive it. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate and praise God. And if today's your first time, please send us a message. Let me know how this message has blessed you today. Hallelujah. Remember next week, stepping into spirit-led opportunities, part two. God bless you.